Welcome to the Virtuous Woman Show. My name is Reverend Ruth Kayo, and this is a wonderful day that the Lord has given to us for you and I to rejoice and be glad in it. I just want to believe that the Lord is keeping you well and keeping your children well and your family and glory be to his name. Paradventure, the week didn't go like you expected it to go. I want you to know that God is still God of another chance. He's going to give you a wonderful week. So expect a wonderful and amazing things to come your way because God is a faithful God. So as usual, we bring you women that have gone through different experiences in life and they overcame the challenge that was thrown against them and they were winners and they uh, became people that could go out and share their story. And today with me, I have one of us. Her name is Agnes Akifuma. And she's a woman of God that God is using in our country, Kenya, and even beyond through her music. But her story did not start all like being rosy. She, had, she went through challenges, especially health challenges from a very young age. But today, it's a different story. But before we get even into that, we want to know who Agnes is and where what happened to her and how the Lord has brought her throughout her journey until where she is today. So Karibu kwa show Agnes. Asante sana. God bless you so much. Amen. Asante kwa kukuja kwa kujitolea. Thank you for having me. Mm, you're welcome Agnes. Yeah. You have come to share your story and I believe that your story is going to encourage a woman Amen. that is watching us to know the journey that the Lord has taken you through and the healing power. Yeah. So tell us more about who you are, where you come from. Yeah. Thank you so much. Mm. My name is Agnes Akifuma. Mm -hmm. I'm born again. I love Jesus. Amen. Agnes Akifuma is a born again Christian, as I said, mm -hmm. is a mother. Wow. is a wife mm -hmm. and is a minister Amen. of gospel. Amen. Yeah. You minister through your singing. Yes. God has given you a wonderful gift. Yeah, I thank you. know, you. sometimes I wonder how people compose songs, <laughs> but you're going to tell us all that in your yeah. story. Yeah. But before we get there, we want to know how, how, how you grew up, who you are. And you like you told me, he, Ugonjo, Ilianza, Ukiwa Mdogo. Yeah. But they didn't know. So, but tell us, at a new gonjo gani he? Okay, since my childhood, mm. I started having problem, mm -hmm. but no one realized what was it. Mm -hmm. I was just falling sick now and then, mm -hmm. and it continued for so many years. Okay, which it really affected even my education because okay. I used to be in school like. Two weeks I'm in school, mm -hmm. I'm not in school. Yeah, yeah that was my life. Mm -hmm. But later on, they, they discovered was a liver problem. Okay. Yeah, according to doctors, they say it's a liver cirrhosis. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So what is liver cirrhosis? Liver cirrhosis. Unajua kuna watu ingini wanafikiaga. Liver cirrhosis ni gonjua ya pombe. <laughs> okay, liver cirrhosis si ugonjwa wa pombe kwa sababu kama inge kwa ugonjwa wa pombe mm. mimi haenge nipata mm. sijai kunywa in my life. <laughs> so it's something mm. according to doctors they said maybe niliongelea kwa maji machafu mm. ama nilipata through maji nilikunywa so that kamdudu went and ikauma the liver. Oh. So it started damaging wa mali Okay. So the liver ikaanza ku shrink. Okay. So when the liver started shrinking, mm. the volume reduced and the veins became too thin. Okay. When the veins became too thin because of the pressure of the blood when it's pumping, mm. the, the veins burst. Okay. So when they burst, I have internal bleeding. Okay. And that blood cannot stay inside me, so I have to vomit it. Okay. So it reached a point where mm. I started vomiting blood. Mm -hmm. The blood couldn't stay in my body. It reached a point even the stool used to be blood. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the, how old were you exactly? Okay, I started falling sick like the age of nine. Mm -hmm. But 
it continued until I was in class seven. That is like 12, 13 years. Mm -hmm. That is the first time I vomited blood. Okay. Uh, I woke up this morning, mm. I just felt dizzy, then mm -hmm. I fell down. Mm -hmm. By the time I regained conscious, I found myself in the sweat all the body and I formed a lot of blood. Mm -hmm. So I was too weak to even to stand. Okay. So my people decided they should take me to the hospital, but they said this time around, mm. they won't take me to the normal hospitals around because I grew up in the village. Yeah. So they said, those hospitals have been there and they have not been getting any help. And since now it's getting serious, they don't understand what really he is. Mm. They should bring me to Nairobi so that they can take me to Kenyatta Hospital. Okay. So they brought me to Nairobi. But by the time I reached Nairobi, mm. I had vomited blood until I was white. Mm -hmm. When you try to fold me, I used to faint. I okay. used to pass. So. But by the grace of God, mm. I was able to reach Nairobi. So the following day in the morning, they took me to Kenyatta. Mm -hmm. When they took me to Kenyatta, I was admitted. And they started treatment, though they did not take any tests. They did not take me for any test to find out where was the blood coming from. Okay. So the doctor just concluded and said, it seems like I have liver seed. It seems, seems like I have stomach ulcers. Okay. So they said the intestines, they are damaged. So it's like those idonda, they are bleeding. Okay. Jomana na tapika dam. Okay. But now the question was, this is a small child. Mm. Where is the ulcers coming from? Okay. So they, I stayed in Kenyatta for like three weeks. Mm -hmm. The bill was getting big day by day, but I was not getting any help because mm -hmm. the more I stayed, the more I became weak. Okay. I was getting weaker and weaker. Mm -hmm. So it reached a point after the three weeks, mm -hmm. they discharged me. Okay. And when they discharged me, I was supposed to be taken home, but I couldn't even walk. Mm -hmm. I had stayed to the hospital until it's like I'm paralyzing. I couldn't walk. I couldn't even turn myself when you wake up on bed. It's the mm. same way you will find me even the mm. following day. The way doctor lay me, mm. unless someone come and help me to turn me, I can't. Apo ndo nilikuwa nafanya, even aja nilikuwa naenda apo kwa bed. They oh. will come, lift me, clean the bed, return me. Yeah, it was really worse. Okay. So, mm -hmm. when they discharged me, my, my mother tried to think out. What is she going to do about the bill? Because she had already lost a job mm. because of taking care of me. She was not going to She work. was in and out of work. Yeah, so yeah. she lost her job. So she decided maybe mm. to go to the church where we were worshipping, mm. where she used to go to church, at least to ask for help. Mm. And when she went there, she talked to the pastor, and pastor suggested that they should get us more Arambi okay. to raise the money. Mm. So... She told my mother to print some cards to give people, mm. to inform people that the certain date and what, what, yeah. they should come and raise the money. But now, remember I'm still in the hospital mm. when this is going on. Yeah. So when my mom, after printing the cards and mm. brought them to the pastor, pastor did not give them out. Mm -hmm. And he, he didn't even announce to the church that there is an around yeah. is expected mm. to to fund the money that was tally. Mm. So ikafika ule wakati, they want to the arambe was like tomorrow. Today mm. it's on Saturday. So my mother asked the pastor, what are we going to do? Because the arambe is tomorrow and I haven't heard you announce anything mm. or say anything. But the day I was admitted, mm. the following day the following Sunday, mm. Pastor announced in the church and said, Agnes is very sick. Mm. She's in the hospital yeah. and whosoever wants to go and visit her can go and visit her. But yes. we are not sure what she's suffering from, okay. though we think she was committing abortion. This is a 13 years old. <laughs> because the pastor heard that I was vomiting blood, mm. but he did not take time to find out where the blood was really coming from. He oh. just was so concluded with devil oh. track. Uh, uh, yeah. So the, the issue became very complicated. Mm -hmm. So I think that also contributed for the pastor not to announce their rampy or I don't know. Mm. So wakati ilifikia, 
that Sunday, mm. you know, people, there is nobody mm. came for that Arambe, even the pastor himself. Mm. Even the pastor himself. So, mommy has the pastor, what are we going to do? And where are the cards? So, the pastor told, the, told mommy, me ni lisa kupeana cards. You can even take them. Mami ya kamusa, where am I taking them now? Mm, and it's and too late. It, yeah. So, pastor told mommy, unaweza enda kuwashia jiko. <laughs> Sababu sasa hakuna kitu tunafanya yes. arambe isha afika. Mm. Was so disappointing. So, that day ilifika, there was no arambe, nobody came, not even the pastor, there was mm. no money. My mom decided to take another action to go and find my father, at least mm. to help. Yeah. And my mom, my father also rejected me and said, I don't have anything to do with that child. I think she's cast. Oh. So I was abandoned even by my father mm. and I was there. I'm still in the hospital. They decided to Oh. Because the bill is there. And yes. they are supposed to pay the bill yes. and there is no money. Yes. So they toroshed me from the hospital. Now mtu mwenye wanatorosha kutoka hospitali, I can't walk. Uh -huh. So I tried to gain some strength uh -huh. kwa, kwa stairs uh -huh. to go down so that they can carry me home. Uh -huh. But to make the matter worse, when I went home that night, uh -huh. I thank God because I'm alive today. Yeah. If I did not die that night, yes. God had a purpose with me. Amen. I vomited all the blood. Mm. So the following day, they were like, what are we going to do? They can't not take you back there to the hospital. There is no hospital. money. They can't take me back to Kenyatta. Yeah. My father has rejected me. There is no help from church. Mm. And they are like, what are we going to do? So they decided to take me to another hospital, mm. at least to start afresh. Mm. So they took me to St. Mary's Hospital. It's in Langata. Mm. That's where they took me. And the doctors there, they said, we can't start treating her without finding out what's the problem. <laughs> so we have to do our own tests. Test. Mm. So they started taking the test. They did a lot of things. Mm. And every result came out the same thing, that showing its liver. Okay. Its liver. But now the doctor said mm. they have realized it. They have discovered it very late. The oh. liver is very damaged. So they said there's no way she can get well. The only thing we can do is to help her. At least as kuma skuma ile miyaka mungu ata mpatia. Okay, they, they said it had really damaged yeah, yeah, yeah. your liver. Yeah, they How were far so, had it damaged? They said, okay, I can't really tell, but that yeah. is what they told my people. You okay. Know? Yeah. yeah, that's what they told my people. Okay. So they started treating me. Mm. Ambayo waliniweka kwenye vipimo, waliniweka kwenye madawa. Mm. They started giving me injection every one, one injection per week. Okay. They used to give me on a Wednesday. I can't forget. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and this injection was 4,000 shillings. Oh. And they were supposed to give me 10. Those three is 40,000. Mm -hmm. And apart from that, they started giving me some medicine, which I was taking three tablets a mm -hmm. day. Yeah. One in the morning, in the afternoon, and in the evening. Mm -hmm. And every tablet was 700 shillings. Remember, my mom has no job. Eh? Yes. This is 2,100 per day. Oh. There is 4,000 every week. Uh -uh. So That's the burden became huge and huge. Mm. But now where my mom is born, the brother said, no, we cannot abandon you at this thing. Mm. We will help you where we can. We will sell whatever. So they used to sell whatever. Amen. Someone could even take some maids. Uh. Whatever. Wanaenda wanauza to, to get the money. Mm. At least before that week, he wow. still could figure so wow. that I can continue with, with the treatment. Mm. But now, the more they continued, I wasn't getting better. Though they tried to maintain the situation, mm. the vomiting reduced. Wow. At least I could survive like for two weeks, I have informed blood. That okay. was a miracle to my family. Mm -hmm. For me to stay two weeks, Sijata Pika Dam mm. was really a great miracle. Mm. So it reached a point where they said, according to the way liver is, mm. it seems like my chances to conceive, they are very low. It's okay. like I will never have a baby in my life. <laughs> <laughs> so every day there was a new report which was uh -huh. really discouraging. Wow, yeah, negative report. Negative report. Uh -huh. And we took that, though it was not a good report, but there is nothing we can do yeah. since the situation is like that way. But I still believed God. 
and I continued with the treatments, with mm. the treatments, it reached this point where they said, now the liver where it has reached, mm. it seems like I can't survive more than three months. Oh, before we go, to, we get to the where you can't survive uh, more than three months, uh -huh. we will take a short break. And when we come back, I'm sure you're following Agnes's story. And if you could be sick, you could be having a situation, this story is going to change your perspective about God. It's going to help you and give you strength to push until God gives you a miracle. So we will take a short break. We will be right back after this. But before we go for the break, I want to ask you, call a friend. Tag them and tell them the Vaches Woman Show is on so that they can be blessed by Agnes's story. We'll be back after this. <laughs> 